All right, so the LV6548 and generators. I've got a pair up on the wall over here. I've heard that many of the customers um, saying that uh, sometimes the generator, especially a non uh, inverter type generator, can cause the inverters not to synchronize. You get the power light that flashes, or sometimes it'll charge, sometimes it won't charge. Now we've asked MPP Solar to fix that, and they've given us two firmware releases. Now the firmware versions are based on the U number. Okay, I'm gonna turn these guys on. And I'm gonna to move to the U number in a short while because if you flash the wrong firmware on over here, uh, you, you've bricked it, okay? So you gotta be very, very cautious. So all we gotta do is to find the U number is push the down button. And these are running in split phase at the moment. And we can see what's in PV1, PV2. And we'll find a U number pretty soon. Just keep pushing down. Notice I didn't go into the menu. Okay, this is U4507, uh, U14507, and you will soon see what these numbers mean. This, I'm just showing you how where to get to them. And I'm going to turn these units off now and show you quickly where to download this off the website. So I'm going to turn these off now for a second. Turn them off, turn them off. And this is the generator I've been using, it's been working fine, but it's not an inverter type, and I particularly bought it an inverter list type, but this one so far has been running perfectly. Uh, we have heard from customers that bought these generators on the exhaust over here, the exhaust clogs up, the exhaust clogs up, the little filter inside there on pretty much on all of them, they run them rich. It's a spark arrestor, excuse my hand over there, it's a spark arrestor. Punch a little hole through there. Just be careful you don't make a spark near grassy areas and things like that. And um, you should be fine. Excuse my fingers. I'm trying to work on this camera without my fingers getting in the way. How's that for a snow bank in Utah? It's been a, an awesome, awesome bound of snow this year. And uh, just give you some idea of how this bank is. <laughs> probably, probably July by the time it's gone. Okay. So to find the firmware, go to watch247.com forward slash manuals let me just get that glare out the way there okay and mpp and you scroll back and you'll see there's a folder there called firmware let's tilt this forward. get this guy sorry got the light issues here firmware and look for the lv 6548 just click on that and then you'll see generator charging fix there's a folder over there generator charging fix now if your firmware started with 45 in the front, like mine did, you saw it had a 45 in the U1 number, you're going to use this over here. And if it had a 69, you're going to use that. If it has neither this nor that, and you, you flash your device, you're going to brick it. All right, Brick means that's what you can use the inverter for afterwards. Okay, so we're going to download this file, save as. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And let's pause there. Okay, when you just download to my desktop, I'm going to right click, extract all, extract it, and off we go. Okay, now I've made a new folder and it opens the folder. What you simply do is open that up, reflash, and all you have to do is, is now, the thing is, What you need to do, this is an older computer that has a RS-232 port in the back over there. Okay, DB9 pin over yeah, there. Is too. That's the VGA, and this is the DB9 pin over here, the serial port. This is the cable that comes with the unit. It's not an Ethernet cable, it's an RS-232 cable. You can see there's only two wires used in it, or f four wires, and then it's a DB9 connector. Now, to make your new laptop that doesn't have a... Um, USB port RS-232, you've got to buy one of these on Amazon, eBay, etc. About under 10 bucks. So it's got a male DB9 on the one side that plugs in there. And this little guy plugs into the USB port. And now you've essentially made a USB port into a serial cable. This plugs into the inverter. That's going to plug in over there in the PC COM port. All right. So here is a, a shop inverter that we've got. 
uh, we just practice all sorts of things on here. This one also shows U14507. So we're going to flash this guy with this cable in here onto our PC. And uh, we're going to do that right now. So the invert probably needs to be in the off position. And if I were you, I'd supply AC power to the inverter or solar power to keep it on. Under battery power like this, uh, it's touch and go if it's going to stay on. So just supply AC power. You can try battery. I'm going to do that right now. And take the cable apart. Okay, so we're going to turn this inverter on. And then we're going to come to the reflash tool that we've unzipped over here. Double click that, run. We made sure this is for the 45 u1 version it'll come up with com1 because i've connected in my com port on my laptop over there and i click update you want to update the firmware yes and you'll see that it should start updating when i turn that inverter off all right it says upg yes and immediately over here it starts connecting and in a short while, we'll see the block start climbing over there. There we go. So now it's going to tell me it takes 11 minutes to do. And there we go. So the power button, I turned it on. And when it's on, it won't start flashing. The moment I turned it off, gave it a bit of time. It started flashing it. And in, I'll see you in 11 minutes time. All right. So... The difference between an inverter generator is it actually has an inverter inside it to give you a pure sine wave at 60 hertz exactly. A non-inverter type generator can give you an, an ugly waveform out which can sometimes cause the inverter not to synchronize properly with the incoming waveform. The frequency needs to be between 53 or sorry 58 and 63 hertz and people say well my generators run fine for months and months and months all of a sudden they call you in winter time or summer time but the grade of gas might have changed the temperature of the generator might have changed you might need some wd-40 on the governor it could be many many things that happen that cause a generator to lose synchronization or to maintain proper frequency now like i said i've never had a problem with this one yet but there are guys that have run their generators for hours and hours and hours only to find out one day they turn it on and this inverter won't charge off generator. Which is the reason for this uh, firmware update to make it less sensitive to generator noise. Now, what can also happen is, another way to kind of get your generator to synchronize is to put a load on before. Now, I always recommend a resistive load like a heat gun. Don't put another motor on because a motor makes more noise than anything else. Think of it as... If you were in a, in, a, in a room without any furniture in, you can hear an echo. Now, <clears throat> that's what happens to the same thing in the electricity world. If you're running a generator with no load on, you can sometimes hear the generator hunts, you know, uh, 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 and that causes the inverter to lose synchronization. So just running a simple little load on, maybe a 100 watt light bulb, a little heat gun or something, your favorite device, you plug into the generator first, let it just calm down and be stable, and then plug it into the inverter. Now that's a big 6.5 kilowatt inverter and I get this question a lot. Can I run a 1100 watt inverter to charge this 13 kilowatt system? Of course you can. All you do is you set the utility charging apps. By the way, turn these guys down. Now remember, there are two settings in this guy. First of all, if you want to charge from generator, the best way is to set utility as the first priority. If you're down and out, that's going to be utility, solar, then battery. That'll be the first priority. If I push the enter, there's SUB, which is solar, utility, then battery, which means that this it'll take solar first, then utility. If you want to make sure the generator has the first priority, you set it to utility, solar, then battery. Now, SBU, you can see utility is the last priority. Solar, then battery. Now, battery according to um, setting 12 and 13, right? So people say, well, I've got to set to SBU and, and I've got my generator running and it won't charge. The reason it won't charge is because you've got to go to setting 12. Setting 12 says if my battery falls below 50 volts. So if your battery is sitting at 51 volts and you run the generator, it's not going to start charging. 
it only start charging if the generator runs below 50 volts in SVU mode and then setting 13 I've set this to full so it will only stop charging when the battery reaches full now you can change this to any voltage you want to you can set that obviously you cannot set it lower than 48 volts because and if you do if I do try and set it over there it's not going to take your setting because setting 12 is lower and th setting 13 is the upper limit so that's going to be a false setting so let's just push enter there again and you can see setting 12 is 15 setting 13 and this is a typical example of a setting that will cause the inverter not to start up where setting 13 should be higher than setting 12 and you can go all the way up to 60 volts so you can say when the generator when the battery gets to 52 volts shut off all right so i just left it full right now or 57 volts now the other important thing is uh, like i've got a little mickey mouse generator there thousand watts and here i've got two inverters of 13 kilowatts now you can charge with the third with a 1000 watt generator it's going to take forever all right if you had 10 kilowatts of battery 10 kilowatt hours of battery it's going to take 10 hours running the generator with absolutely no load on these inverters okay so setting number two is the total amperage solar and utility that can go to the battery and see over here setting number 11 is for utility charging amps now that is battery amps at 48 volts not 10 amps coming at 120 volts in other words 10 amps times 120 volts is 1200 watts it's running at a 10 amps is going to pretty much push my generator to the uh, to the max if it was running at 120 volts but that's 10 amps at 48 volts so that's only 480 watts at 120 volts that's uh, 480 watts you could probably times that by two and go 20 amps but because you've got two inverters you've got to make sure that this is also set to 10 amps so 10 amps plus 10 amps is uh, 20 amps or you can turn one off you could set the utility charging amps to zero if you wanted to let's see what it'll go down to i think two amps is the lowest so if you wanted to you can make one inverter 2 amps and the other one you can adjust to 10, 20 amps or whatever the generator can handle. Or just balance the two of these numbers together. Okay, Don't, don't make one 2 and the other one 40 or the one 10 the other one 20. You can do that, but be sensitive to your generator. The other question that often happens is, if you're charging from the generator, the generator at a thousand watt generator it's going to be using all of that load to, to charge your battery there's going to be nothing left for you to run any ac output so the, the negatives of having a small generator is you won't be able to run your loads while you're busy charging which is pretty obvious because why would you want to charge why would you use a thousand watt generator to charge your inverter if you're running a load of 900 watts that means only like 100 watts left has got to charge your battery and uh, and that'll take 100 hours of running the generator so it's it's all based on mathematics so because we had this inverter on battery only and the power switch was off after it finished i just walked in right now and went beep 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 and the power went off update success so we're going to turn this guy on for the first time after the firmware update and we're going to see what the firmware version is now So now it is supposedly less sensitive to, vari to variations in the generator. Now it was 4507. I think on this one last time, now it's 45.62. All right, so um, the inverter still works. It still operates. Like I said, if you had to flash the wrong firmware on there, you're going to cause your inverter. So you cannot take this MPP solar firmware and flash it on a, on a Sun Gold or a EG4 or something like that. Um, it's just going to brick it, all right. So MPP Solar has a solution now for us for the generator to become less sensitive. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope this works. And this same principle works for flashing firmware, any other firmware that you have on any of the MPP Solar inverters. It's as simple as double clicking, opening up, and make sure as well. Here's a gotcha. If your COM port is more than three or four, it usually this program won't detect. 
So if you're going to change your COM port, let's say you keep plugging COM ports on your COM port number 45 already, you're just going to go to Control Panel, all right, and you're going to go to uh, just actually you're going to Device Manager, Device Manager over there. You're going to find this COM port. Let's say your COM port's over there at some ludicrous number. Let me just find where this COM port is. There it is there. And I know if I plug another COM port in over here, I'm going to plug another COM port in quickly just to see what number it comes up with. And I'm going to plug it in on this side over here. All right. And the driver for this thing has not been installed yet. So uh, you can go to properties and you can go to update driver in this case which I'm not going to do right now. But you can go to details, and I can even change the COM port on this one for you. Let me go here. So this, let's say this COM port was 45. You can go properties, and you can go port settings, and advanced, and you can change the COM port number. You can see I've had all of these in use already. So, so just bring it back up to COM1, COM2, or COM3, and you'll be good. Okay, thanks for watching.